If you've been following along on my channel, you would know that I studied civil engineering at university. But what you probably didn't know is that I was able to rank first in my class for the courses Structural Design and Structural Analysis. At my university, Structural Analysis is the most advanced structural engineering course you can complete during an undergrad degree. And in this course, you go deep into the fundamental concepts and theories that underpin the design of structural elements. And on the other hand, Structural Design is a course where you apply the theories you have learned in a more real life-like scenario. Here you learn how to design elements such as columns, beams, struts, and bracing, and you also get taught how to design a bunch of different steel connections. Now, I'm not sharing this result with you to brag or flex, but what I do want to do is share how I was able to achieve this result by giving you my top seven study tips. And with that, let's just jump straight into it. All right, so the first thing I want to touch on is something I like to refer to as the engineering cycle. And this is basically a term I coined that summarizes the method that engineering professors like to use to examine their students. And let me know if this sounds familiar. The cycle looks like this. First, give a lecture that introduces a concept. Next, provide tutorial questions that demonstrate how to use the formulas that are associated with the concept. And finally, check if the student can use the equations independently by testing via an exam or an assignment. This all sounds pretty simple, right? But once I finally discovered that this cycle exists, I discovered where I need to fit into this cycle if I wanna get good grades. And what I found is that for each concept we were covering in class, I needed to be able to do three things. Number one is identify what type of problems are solved using that concept. Number two is identify the associated formulas. And three, practice the procedure until I could remember it. These three simple steps can be applied in any engineering course. And once I was able to recognize this and apply this to my own study, my study got a lot more effective. All right, now the second thing I wanna share is how I would go about studying throughout the semester. And basically there's two ways to look at it. The first way being my schedule and the second way being my strategy. First, let's talk about my schedule. And essentially what I found really worked for me is that slow and steady really wins the race. And what I mean by this is that putting in consistent effort throughout the semester, rather than putting in a large amount of effort right before an assessment item is due, is definitely the way to go. By studying like this, I never felt like I was overworked or like I needed to pressure myself into to spending days on end studying before exams in order to get good marks. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely would spend a little bit more time than usual studying before exams, but what usually happens around exams also is that your classes drop off. So that time I would usually spend learning new content, I would just spend it revising old content. In terms of the actual number of hours I spent studying each day throughout the semester, I would say that this varied depending on what I had on that day. If I had a day that was full of classes, I might do somewhere between say one and three hours of study study and on those days where I only had a half day or only a couple of classes, I'd usually do a little bit more and say somewhere between three and six hours of study. And on the weekend, this number would really vary a lot depending if I had an event on or if I was working at a part-time job, but I would say that this number probably varies somewhere between two and eight hours of study. Something else I also wanna mention here is that there was definitely days where I did no study at all. So don't feel like you need to study every day if your goal is to get the best grades possible. All right, and for my strategy, I would use a combination between the process that I mentioned in the engineering cycle and the study techniques that I've mentioned in a previous video called how to study effectively and I'll pop a link to that on the screen and in the description below if you want to check it out. All right, and the next thing I want to talk about is something a lot of people don't use to their full potential, and that is the teaching staff. What a lot of people don't seem to realize is that teachers are not only there to answer the questions you might have in class, but they're also there to take questions outside of this time too. Many teachers actually allocate a specific amount of time in their schedule each week to something called consultation time. And this is basically a time where they welcome students into their office to answer any of their questions without the need to book an appointment. From my experience, it was never hard to get my questions answered during this time because either there was no one in the line or only a couple students that would show up. Lucky for me, back when I was in high school, a couple of the teachers that I had encouraged me to come and see them outside of class time to get my questions answered, so I'd already developed this routine before getting to uni. Although what's really lucky for you current engineering students is that getting access to help has never been easier through platforms such as Microsoft Teams and Zoom, so really there's no good excuse for not taking full advantage of the knowledge that the teaching staff have. All right, and the next thing I wanna cover is assignments. And what I found here is that what really differentiates the assignments that get great marks and those that get really great marks is the appearance. I found that this is especially true for assignments that are subjective, like reports or presentations, and that putting in the extra bit of effort it takes to make things look pretty is worth the extra time if you want the extra marks. For example, purely from an appearance point of view, if you had to choose between reading these two reports, most people I would say would choose to read the better looking one. 
because from a psychological point of view, we've all been programmed to associate good looking things with being of higher quality. So if you can have this same effect on your marker's mind, why wouldn't you? Okay, and the next thing I want to go over is the importance of completing past exam papers. One thing I definitely began to notice more during the later years of my degree is how common it was for professors to recycle exam questions year after year, and also how similar the actual exam could be to the practice exam. And what I found is that you can really take advantage of this by focusing in on the questions that are more likely to show up on the exam. The way I would go about doing this is first just completing all the practice exams that are available, and after that, I would go back through all the example problems we've completed throughout the semester and handpick out the ones that are similar to those that appear on the practice exam. My theory here is that if you can practice a bunch of different variations of the most likely questions on the exam, you should be well prepared when a different one does pop up and be able to handle it. All right, and another thing I wanna share is that I never did a lot of study on exam day. In my opinion, by exam day, you really should have covered everything you need to know by that point, and in the hours before an exam, you should really be relaxing and getting a clear mind. In the past, I have tried studying right up to the last second before, but what I found is that I never actually learned anything properly in those last seconds, and all I managed to do was increase my stress and decrease my confidence. Although, what I did like doing on exam day is just having a read through of my most important note sheets, and if there was time doing a couple practice run throughs of the toughest questions that I thought were most likely to pop up on the exam. Okay, and the final tip I have for you is my approach when actually sitting exams. For starters, I would always begin by flicking through the entire test paper and getting a feel for how long the exam is, and while doing this, I would also take note of which questions are worth the most marks. One tip you've probably heard before is that the weighting of each question can give you an indication of how long you should be spending on it. And I totally agree with this, because sometimes in an engineering exam, there's questions that can take as long as 30 minutes to solve, and if you're not taking note of how much the question is worth, you might start freaking out thinking that you won't have enough time to complete the exam. Okay, and next I just want to quickly touch on the fact that I always completed my exams from beginning to end and never did anything funky like work backwards or target questions I definitely think I know how to solve first, so don't worry about having to do anything like that. Something else I want to mention here is that when I ran into a question that I didn't immediately know how to solve, what I would do is write down some initial thoughts and if I could, note down a formula that I think would be needed in the solution before moving on. Also, on the other hand, when I did know how to solve the question, I always tried to show every step in my working out because in engineering, even if you get the final answer wrong, you can still get a lot of marks just from your working out. Although I will admit that sometimes getting part marks does depend on your professor, but either way, I think showing your working out stops you from making more mistakes and it's a good habit to get into. Now, the final thing I want to let you in on is the importance of checking whether your final answer actually makes sense. Often in engineering problem solving questions, it's very easy to get tripped up on units, and in the end this mistake can make your answer completely different from what it's supposed to be. So one thing I always like to do to reassure myself that the final answer I've gotten is correct is try and solve the question in another way and see if I can get the same answer. Now often being able to do this check is very time dependent, but if you do finish early, this is a great way to check your answers rather than just re reading your own work. All right, so there you have it. I've given you a lot of information to take in there, but I really hope you can take some of these things and use them to succeed during your time at university. Also, if you want to find out the full note-taking strategy that I used, which also played a part in helping me to achieve better grades, then you should check out this video I made here. And if you want to find out what the biggest mistakes that all engineering students make are, then check out this video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.